that through, listen up. I know firsthand how limited a vessel medical insurance can be. This is why you need reliable medical coverage. Moore Dixon offers comprehensive global insurance tailored for yachts, covering everything from emergencies to routine checkups with flexible options and a single point of contact. Moore Dixon has been voted best health and medical insurance by captains and crew, including myself. Don't wait until the unexpected happens. Get covered today. Visit mdbl.im or email them at inquiries at mdbl.im for a free quote. Welcome to Uncensor. And for today, we have, you know, we're discussing a common issue among yak crew, which is drag. it does affect all crew members on board, but it can impact women differently. So with the support of Nicola Latson, our guest, she's a former chief stew turn hormone and gut health coach. We will explore the relationship between stress, hormones, and menstrual cycle. The idea behind this talk is to teach you practical strategies to manage stress and support your hormonal health while working on board and obviously beyond. Because believe me, you want to prevent burnout. It happened to me and it not only affected me physically to the point that I had to leave the industry, but also mentally, I became depressed with suicidal thoughts. And I had no other choice but to basically leave the industry to get help and heal. And what happened to me was that during the healing process, I realized the importance of supporting my hormones and honoring my menstrual cycle, especially at work, and how much that really took a toll when I was working on board. So this is why I'm an advocate for mental health and rest on board, as you know. And I'm super excited to talk to you, Nicola, you know, to dive into this uh, dance between stress, hormones, and mental cycle, because I think it's such an important topic that just simply doesn't get talked about often, if at all. So thank you for being here with us. Let's start the conversation with you telling us a little bit about yourself. How did you end up becoming, you know, how do you turn from stewardess to a uh, hormone gut health coach? Yeah. Yeah, so it definitely was not planned. I never thought my future would ever be in health coaching, especially in like holistic health. I've always been interested in health because I lost my dad's cancer and he went the holistic route. And that's kind of what made him feel better, but then conventional medicine came back into it. So it's always been there. And then I, when I was in yachting, I just felt such bad effects on my health with stress how it imp impacted my gut hormones. And I didn't even, I didn't realize that's what it was. I was just going with the flow. I'd go and leave and oh, I'd be getting to bed at like 2 a.m., waking up at 2 p.m. And it took me about a week, two weeks to get back into like normal life. And I just kind of thought, this is okay. This is what happens, this is how I have to deal with it. And to the point where it actually started affecting those around me because I became so, emotional, irritated, I get so weepy and I just start crying <laughs> and I, I just couldn't even control it. So I knew that there was a lot of healing that I had to do internally. So that's why I ended up leaving yachting, which is a shame because yachting, you know, is such a beautiful industry. But when I was there, I just saw what, what it was doing to, to women and male health. And it's such a shame because no one spoke about it back then. Nowadays, people are speaking more about mental health, hormones, stress, movement. It is becoming more of a thing in yachting, which is amazing. So yeah, so after yachting, I healed myself, all natural, because when I went to doctors, I went for tests with doctors, and they all said to me, everything's normal, everything is fine, can't see anything. And I was like, I know my body, and there's no way I could live the rest of my life the way I'm living now. I just couldn't, I had pain, I was irritable. My menstrual cycle was just not normal. I had terrible gut issues to a point where I actually started crying because I thought, how can I live my life like this? There's no ways and the doctors just would not help me. So that's when I started diving deep into holistic health and then I ended up studying it and 
started coaching women because it was such a, a need and I, I, it brought me straight into yachting because so many women could heal from this and have an amazing time in yachting. Yes. And I'm glad that you say that because even though it also did happen to me that I literally had, you know, I had, I had a really long career in yachting, 16 years on board. Yeah. Out of those 16 years, eight of those were in chronic stress leading me to burnout. Yeah. When I took off the time over a year to heal, I ended up coming back to yachting. And I did yachting completely different. And I had such a different experience to the point that I ended up doing eight more years. But I actually yeah. enjoy them. I have boundaries. I understood my cycle and you understood how to support my hormones, how to support my physical, mental and you know health. So what I'm saying is, yes, yachting can bring you know, a lot of negative things for us. But if we support our body, mind, and spirit, it can really lead to an amazing, beautiful career as well. A hundred percent. I'm glad that I, you are bringing the tools so people that are in the industry now can actually get that support. Because like me and you, we have to look for it somewhere else. And people don't yeah. understand what yachting is, you know, if they're not like inside the world of it. Exactly. So if I had to go back into yachting, I mean, there is just so many things that you can do. Like a lot of your crew say to me, yeah, but I can't control my food. I understand that. You can't just go into the galley and cook your own food. But there are steps that you can take to help your blood sugar, to help your stress, to help your hormones with the food that they provide. It's just like the way you eat it, what you can do, which we'll go into. But yeah, you know, I would, and I used to think this is normal. Like I used to go two, three days without going outside. And I just thought, oh, I've been outside for two days. Like, it's no joke. That's a serious thing. And yeah. you need you you need to see natural light, artificial light that you get into the boats, is not helping you at all. You're actually confusing your body. So even by little things like going outside in the morning, if I did that, would have completely changed my hormones. You know, just by something simple, ten minutes instead of scrolling on my phone. So things will go into, but those are the simple things that you can do. Absolutely. So let's start with what's the difference between chronic stress and acute stress? So acute stress is short term. It's more there just to help you in for a specific event or challenge. So if you're almost in a car accident, that chronic, that acute stress is there to kind of help you in that little moment. Chronic stress is more long term. It's activated for a long time. And that's what can cause health issues in the long run. Acute stress is kind of, you know, it comes out, helps you for that situation or that event. And then it should just like disappear and you become fine again, your hormones. It doesn't affect your hormones too much, but then a chronic stress, it does. That's when it's long-term and it could take days, even months, years to, to resolve. So Which I different- think most of us on yachts work you know, our stress level is not even acute anymore. It may have started an acute thing, but it has become like chronic because we're constantly on fight or flight. We're constantly under the stress of not knowing, having to do the next thing, not having enough time, you know, you name it. (laughs) Yeah, so so basically it'll start with it. It'll start with the acute stress and then immediately it'll go to chronic stress but then you're in such a chronic state of stress for such a long time that you actually start losing it and you get you go from having high cortisol to low cortisol because your body just burns out and that's when you end up burning out and everything you know just starts shutting down and become fatigued so yeah it's a very long time about that what is the role of cortisol and adrenaline in relation to between stress and hormone levels yeah so adrenaline and cortisol they both released for a stress response. So when you're stressed, both of them get released, but they do have, you know, two different things. So adrenaline is more that immediate quick response. So it increases your heart rate, your blood flow. When you start sweating, you're anxious. So that's more the adrenaline working. And cortisol is more for long-term. That's where it starts helping you with your fuel. So starts putting um, glucose back into your blood. So that your that your cells and body can use it. So adrenaline does its job, works quickly, acts fast, but then disappears. And then cortisol kind of you know takes over and is the long term hormone that 
That's how the long term and adrenaline are meant to be working. <laughs> That's what I mean. <laughs> regulated <laughs> system. Because you're talking about, yeah. I'm like, oh my God, that definitely was not how they were working on my system when I was on board. So what are the common systems of hormonal imbalances caused by chronic stress and how can we identify them in our own yeah, so, body, right? Or I'll, maybe in I'll other say, people. Yeah, I'll say that. I just, what, what everyone also needs to realize is there's such a thing where cortisol is actually becoming, it's getting a really bad name. So mm -hmm. when people think, oh, I've got high cortisol, I've got low, cortisol is not a bad hormone. Cortisol is actually released from your body to protect you, to give you that energy, to save you in a situation. But your brain doesn't know the difference between real st actual stress or perceived stress. So it does, so when either, be, so it, it acts exactly the same way, whether you need to reply to 50 emails or you're being chased by a lion. It does exactly the same thing. So a lot of the time we kind of work ourselves up for a situation that's not life-threatening, but your body actually thinks that you're being chased by a lion. And that's where... Like when the owners, they're about to come on board and yeah, you can see the people. Like I, I remember seeing this one, Chiefs too. This... was the word I'm trying to... like frantic energy coming and I was like I mean now I can see how those were hormones kicking in like to the next level you know I was like oh my god this person like she's being attacked by something and yeah. this was like her normal and then what I did see which I don't know maybe how that hormones relates to other people hormones but I saw how that was perceived by other people and how then they nervous system started to almost regulate the same way as hers, you know? So yeah. then it was like the whole interior team on this frantic energy because <laughs> somebody, you know, had that, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of trying because I was in service. So I felt that my body must have thought I was in a cage with a bunch of packed lines because as soon as you hear the boss is on board or boss has left the cabin or sitting at the table, it's, it's that quick, which, you know, you do need that. It's, it's more of an energy that you need, but you shouldn't have to be disrupting your hormones. And it's learning how to, you obviously still want to have energy for that moment, but it's kind of saying to your body, letting your body know that you're, you're safe. safe. And that's what techniques you can do in those situations to say, oh, don't worry, you're, you know, you're safe on the inside. So your brain doesn't release so much of those stress hormones. And then it's not affecting your hormones as much. I'm not saying don't get hyped up when you're in service or don't get hyped up when the boss comes on because you do need that energy. It's a very fast industry. Hmm. But taking steps to just let your body know that. What are, you're okay. <laughs> what are the real like physical symptoms or even mental symptoms that we can identify? Like, is it like heart palpitation, short breath? sweating like what are those that we can identify within ourselves is that for hormone balances or yeah, for, um, we, we, so we get because a lot of the time we, you know we're so a lot of people are not even uh connected to their body so yeah. they don't even know how to identify like what's happening but if they if we can give them certain example of like hey if your heart's racing if you're short your breath is short i don't know if these are the symptoms but yeah um then you can start, oh, okay, this is what I'm feeling. So obviously my cortisol or adrenaline are out of whack. You know, I'm kind of like in that chronic or I'm in that stress place where I yeah. need to just say, hey, it's okay, I'm safe. Like, and then do all the other techniques that we'll talk about. Yeah, so I think in that moment where you feel like just to let your body know is most cases when you start feeling anxious, shaky, jittery, or, you know, that nervousness feeling, High cortisol is normally, you feel that in throughout your day. So you feel wired and tired at night. You can't go to sleep. You Everybody have, here. <laughs> you right have constant, constant anxiety. You got your hair thinning. Yeah. Um, you, you just can't fall asleep because you, you feel like you need to keep going, but you are tired, but you just can't go. That's when you have high cortisol. When it comes to hormone imbalances, there are so many different symptoms um, that you should look for, but learning how to listen to your body is the most important thing that you can do. Um, and each person is different. So you need to look at what is different for you. So it's more like irregular menstrual cycles, weight gain, more like in the middle section. And you feel like, you know, you're doing everything, but it's not shifting. 
or you start getting menstrual headaches, your breasts start getting tender, you start getting hormonal acne. So it's generally on your jawline over here or it goes down your neck. One or two or few is fine. It's more when it happens all the time and, you know, you start to feel a bit like, you don't, you know, people shouldn't look at you or you don't want to look at people. That's when, you know, you should start thinking about it where you're, you, you know, you're getting irritated, mood swings. You always feel like you need to cry. You have digestive issues. There's loads of different things that you can look for. But what has changed in your body that it's, it's almost most symptoms that you have? Yeah, and I do want to testify to that because it wasn't until like actually recently that I kind of started looking out the symptoms of burn, like potential burnout coming. I was like, oh my God, like, I mean, there's so many, but like the ones that I had was gut issues. I had massive gut issues for years on board. I didn't know at the time that the depression was one. That was like the last one that I got. And it became like with suicidal thoughts and everything. And that's when I was like, okay, I need to like, get the fuck out of here and actually take care of my sir. I had, obviously the fatigue was another one. What you were talking about, how you would go into bed and just not, I had to take like sleeping pills a lot of the time to just be able to like pass out versus I remember now, it, you know, after I heal, I would, it was such a different version, you know, like how, yeah, instead of having to take sleeping pills, I would just drink a tea, a, dream tea or whatever you call it, like silly pity. And Crazy. that would be, enough. but it was because I wasn't on that chronic acute, you know, chronic stress level. I was regulating my nervous system constantly, you know, because, you know, regulated system is not like you're always going to be okay. And you're not going to have peaks, but yeah. it's okay. you have the peak and then you can come back to safety. So it was such a different experience from prior to, to now. And I see often the anxiety I see often the nervousness, like I see that often on, on many women on board. So let's talk about how does this chronic stress impacts the actual menstrual cycle of a woman? Yeah, so well, completely. So your hormones are extremely sensitive and delicate. So once one becomes imbalanced, it's like a knock-on effect for the rest, which is a good and a bad thing. So you know, when you are starting to heal and you're starting to, you know, sort your hormones out, they'll start healing together. But the same happens when, you know, you do have an imbalance. So when you're highly, so also another important thing to say is that the goal is not to completely eliminate stress. You will always have stress in your life. And stress is a good thing because your is body still, you, you still need to have stress. What's important is once that stress has been resolved is that your body comes back down so it's kind of responding to stress instead of reacting to stress. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of going with that. So when you use stress and your body starts releasing cortisol into the body, what it does is it starts increasing glucose in your in your blood. So now you've got high blood levels in 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 your which affects your menstrual cycle completely. And also when you were talking about your digestion. So I just want to say that. So basically how that is affected is you've got a little bacteria in your gut that's responsible for getting rid of excess estrogen. So when you're chronically stressed, it affects the gut bacteria in your stomach, which then instead of getting rid of estrogen through, you know, when you're going to the toilet, it starts reabsorbing it into your mm -hmm. blood. So mm -hmm. then you've got high levels of estrogen, which... Yeah. you know, affect your cycle. And that's when you start getting irregular cycles, you start getting, you know, irritated. That's when the PMS starts showing. And a lot of women can feel that. Yeah. And I want to talk about PMS in the sense of like PMS, premenstrual symptoms are real, but a lot of them are not normal and we have normalized them. Like it's not okay to have like really bad PMS. Like it's not, like it's oh. not your normal state. And if you are having chronic PMS symptoms, then obviously your hormones need to be taken care of. And I know that because it happened to me where like now I don't even get cramps. You know and what I mean? Like it's such a different, it's a game changer. Don't you feel empowered that every oh. time when, you're, when your cycle comes, you don't feel all of that? that I love the cycle. I'm like, you love it. And I, I don't dread it anymore. I don't hate it. Yeah. I'm like, is so good, you know, and beyond just like obviously the physical release and all that. And 
you know, for me, it's like an empowerment of the womb and the creative, you know, power within. But I taking care of my hormones and realizing, you know, educating myself around menstrual health, really, because we don't really get that education when we grow up. You know, you were lucky enough that somebody taught you how to put a pad on the panty and a tampon inside. You know what I mean? Like that was it. People just didn't speak about it because they feel you can't speak about, you know, periods. You can't speak about menstrual cycles. Hello, we're going through it. And it's an incredible thing that you're having a menstrual cycle is amazing what your body goes through and what it does for you. It's preparing to have a baby, basically. That's what your whole menstrual cycle is around, whether you want to or not. You know, you obviously can avoid it, but it's incredible everything that your body does on in a cycle it's like the physical manifestation of us understanding as individuals specifically women talking here the power of creation that we have not just of you know of birthing a baby but birthing anything that we want business yeah. you know oh. jobs, relationships you name it you know friendships whatever it is all your dreams and goals so let's go a little bit deeper into what are the specific phases of menstrual cycle that are more vulnerable to the effects of stress So that will definitely be the luteal phase. So the luteal phase is the last 10 to 14 days of your cycle. So your cycle always, your day one of your cycle is the first day of your bleed up until the day before your next bleed. That's the day of your cycle. So when on average, what they normally talk about is a 28 day cycle, but only 14% of women actually have a 28 day. It can range anything from, 21, 25 days up to 35. After 35 days, it's a bit too long. That's when you, there's an indication that there could be a hormone imbalance. So that's what you work on. So it's generally the luteal phase is 10 to 14 days before your next cycle. So on this part of your cycle, progesterone is the dominant hormone. So when you look at progesterone, it's like your calm, relaxed hormone. So what it does is it's actually prepping your body for potentially pregnancy so what it does is it's getting your your uterus ready for like for the egg and giving all the nutrients so what it actually wants is less stress it wants calmness it wants that's you know this is the time where you start becoming introverted you don't want to make too many plans so if you're stressing your body it's the opposite of what it actually needs and also another thing is cortisol When you've got high cortisol actually doesn't steal progesterone, but it steals the resources that make progesterone and it blocks the production of progesterone. So when it's supposed to be at its highest, it's actually low because cortisol is completely running the show and taking over. So that's when you start getting really bad problems with, you know, tender breasts, irregular cycles is because you do not have enough progesterone. I mean, a lot of people might say, well, I can't control the what happens on board, you know, like our itineraries and all that. And it's true. You cannot control a lot of it, but you can control how you respond to it versus react to it. And I know this because for eight years, I did cyclical leaving on board on charter vessels, craziness all the time. And I was cruising because I wasn't interacting the same way that I was interacting prior with. So really educating yourself around how your menstrual cycle you know, is asking you to interact with it throughout the entire cycle, like the 28 days up to 35 days or however many days you have of the cycle. It's so important because yeah. it's going to make a huge difference on your, obviously your stress levels as well and your hormones. Also living in 80-20, it's not about being perfect. No one can be perfect and you shouldn't try to be perfect. It's about 80% of the try- time doing as much as you can to protect your body and obviously well when you're boss on let's say you've got a whole month of boss on it's 24 7 but there are things that you can do to calm your stress levels to calm them down just a little bit so let's go into that what are those things that we can start doing to calm ourselves down and uh, yeah, so, be more proactive so, yeah so so little things like going outside in the, so as you wake up in the and most of us are guilty. I can almost say 98% of us are guilty of this is the first thing that you do when you wake up is you pick up your phone. And that could be one of the worst things you can do because the the blue light on your phone spikes cortisol. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is 
get up in the morning, leave your phone alone. You'll be okay for 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. Go outside and just get natural light on your face. One of the most important things that you can do. And then other ways that you can do is, you know, try avoid your phone about an hour to 30 minutes before you go to sleep. Because again, blue light blocks the production of your sleep hormone, melatonin, by 55%. So at the time where you need your sleep hormone, you're actually killing it and, and blocking it completely. And that's why you can't fall asleep. Other things you can do is deep breathing, something you can do at any time and anywhere. While you have your tray with your welcome drinks, the boss is coming, just deep breathe. No one will even know you're doing it. Um, gratitude, journaling, start doing things like that. Eating, balancing your blood sugar is extremely important. So that's one thing that you can do. So what I was saying is when you're when the chefs bring out the food, always start your meal with a vegetable or a salad and then go to your protein and then go to your carbs. Because what happens is, the fiber will slow the absorption of the sugar into your blood. You don't so get an insulin spike. Yeah, you won't get those spikes. Or glucose or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people at the moment are talking about, you, you know, your blood sugar, but it is extremely important. And it's normally one of the root causes to hormone imbalances. Yeah. I mean, it's, the, it's to, chronic stress. Uh, to that, I do agree with that. One thing I have noticed also is, not drinking water with the meal, but drinking it after. Obviously, you know, you're not going to choke. You can have a little water, but yeah. that also helps. And walking, like just having some movement massively helps a lot. And you're, well, if I'm on board, how can I walk? I mean, you can just walk around literally or just wash dishes and just do some yeah. sort of movement, basically. You don't have to go on a long run or anything. You know, you know walk outside. I mean, walking outside will be the best because you're getting fresh air. You're yeah. getting stay. Even if it's on the deck, you know. Just on the deck, you're throwing Going for a walk. And also the reason why you should try avoid drinking water while you're eating is because water changes the pH level in your stomach. So your food doesn't get digested. So instead of helping your body after you've chewed it and now the, the body needs to work, you, you're stopping it from digesting that food. So you're not getting all the nutrients that you should be getting. Yeah. And I'm super guilty about eating way too fast. So I definitely know that uh, it's slower. Yeah, so mindful eating extremely important yeah, as well totally which we don't because like on board most of the time we're just like either eating standing or just like shoving something in our mouth and you know and I think all this really comes down to you need boundaries with yourself and you need to choose yourself before anything else because if you don't have your health you can be of service you can be on board you can't you know it's just not gonna the health your health is gonna help you be better at your job. And a lot of the times we put our health on the back seat and we put everything else as priority. But the problem is that at some point that changes and then you're not going to actually be able to do what you've been you know, doing for so long because your health is not there. Exactly. And if you don't make time for your health now, you will have to in the future. And, yeah. and you and you know, I know so it. <laughs> your, yeah, your health isn't going to be, can't be put on pause, you know. And the thing is like, you know, I know a lot of people say, oh, but you don't know how long you're going to live for. But it, it's more doing things now to protect you in your future. So when you're 60, 70, 80, that's when people start feeling the illnesses or the chronic stress. That's when it starts hit, like hitting them more. So if you start doing things now to protect your body, you'll have so much energy and you, you'll have your health when you need it the most. That's when you need it. I think if you're on board, you probably will feel it way before you're 50. Like you're going to feel it way before you Because the level of the fast pace that we're going at is not like normal at all. It's not sustainable. You, you, you just at can't all. do it. Exactly. I, it's like next level. But even like one day you everyone will leave yachting. You're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to stay there. And the thing is, because the yachting industry is such a fast pace, so fast pace, when you get back on land, you be, you're just so fast. And that's just not how things, that's when you'll start realizing and hitting and truly, you. when I left the industry, not the first time to heal, but the second time where I was like, okay, I'm good, I'm done. Like I'm hanging up my score. It took me almost two years to oh. get out of the fight or flight. Literally, I would just be at home working in the computer and I would feel it coming in and it was almost like if I'm not in it 
I'm not being productive. If I'm not yes. feeling this stress, I'm not doing something because that's how was the normal, even though yeah. my norm for the past eight years were way better than my previous eight years. I realized I was still working. And like you said, 80, 20, right? Like I was doing so much better, right? I didn't have gut issues. I didn't have a lot of other things. But when I left, I was like, holy fuck. Like I was like on fight or flight constantly, even though I was like helping my system to continue to regulate. It was like, it has become the norm for me. Yeah. So not being in that feeling was almost weird. I was like, yeah. okay, well, if I'm not <laughs> that, like what's happening? Why am I not, you know, feeling the thing? And I could feel it like almost like a sensation coming up in my body of like, okay, like the stress or however you want to call it. I don't know what it was, but yeah, it, it definitely is something that it takes time, you know, because for so long we pushed it to the limit, you know, it does take yeah, it, a time it becomes to almost like your norm to be 24 yeah. seven rushing, but you, it's not sustainable. And that will lead to, that can, and probably will lead to burnout. And stress is not felt in the same way. Like stress could be, you know, a nutrient deficiency, no sleep. It doesn't mean you, you stress that your job, not having quality sleep mm-hmm. is a stress on your body exactly. because you need stress. Stress is when your body re- like starts healing itself, resting. It's what it needs. So if you're not sleeping cr- like enough, which I get in yachting, sometimes you can you only get four or five. I understand that. But that's fine if you can only get four to five hours while the boss is on. But what you can do is instead of having your nightcap drink of alcohol, rather have a herbal tea. Instead of scrolling on your phone, read a book, journal, speak to someone on board, try to avoid your phones, your stimulants, don't have coffee at night, try not have coffee first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. So although you can only get four hours sleep, I understand that sometimes what happens in the industry, because you know it's not like you'll get four hours sleep for four months, you will for a period of time, but there are steps that you can take to try to reduce that stress on your body. It's, it's important to realize, to remember that we need to start slowing down and things do take time and that's what's amazing is that your body builds what you need to do is build the resilience to stress so that when you are in a stressful situation you bounce back a lot quicker so you don't feel the effects where it affects your sleep affects your energy levels affects your mood because that's when it becomes a problem so when you start healing holistically it takes time there's no quick fix but I can promise you that you will feel the benefits of that, of taking time. And instead of trying to take 10 different supplements, try find the root cause of your issues instead of just taking a supplement, just taking a pill, because that is not helping your body. So it's kind of finding finding what works for you instead of taking an approach that you found on social media. Because a lot of people said they've seen it on social media. That might have worked for someone else, but it not, might not work for you. So it's listening, it's learning how to listen to your own body will be the one of the best things you ever do to your, do for yourself. So, so basically, what I do at the moment is I coach um, women in yachting or out of yachting um, on hormone health and gut health. So, you come to me and we'll do a health history just to see how your current lifestyle is and what you are struggling with, and then we do a 12-week program where we slowly start building lifestyle changes and nutrition into your current lifestyle. So it's not a one program fits all, it's individual personalized tools and whatever you are looking for to heal. So that's why I do a 12 week program. And then also I've got a, an ebook for hormone health. So it's how to balance your hormones naturally. The links are below and you can reach out to her that way or get her guide just so you can start getting to learn more about your hormones and how they affect you in your daily life whether at work or outside of work thank you so much for sharing your expertise and your knowledge with us and hopefully more people get to work with you so they can have a better life you know overall not just at work but you know beyond yachts it's beyond yachting what you learn and what you do on yachts you will take onto you know land life one if you learn how to slow down on yachts 
you'll definitely be able to slow down on land. You know, it's just taking little steps into your life that will help your health. Absolutely. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below and we will reply. All right, everybody, see you on the next Uncensored. Thanks for listening. If you find today's discussion eye-opening and helpful, don't forget to subscribe and share. We would love to hear your thoughts on this topic, so reach out to us on social media via Yachting International Radio or Yachts Mermaids. Let's continue the conversation.